I'm Dr. Spencer King for Jack Intervention. We're going to talk today about fractional flow reserve. I'm visiting today with Dr. Giuseppe DeLuca. Dr. DeLuca is aggregate professor of cardiology at Eastern Piedmont University in Novara, Italy, and has a, a very interesting paper, a very interesting paper, trying to get a handle on uh, intracoronary adenosine as opposed to central intravenous. Now, as I'm remembering it, uh, when the uh, fractional flow reserve was popularized, and the gold standard, I guess, is the central uh, administration of systemic uh, uh, adenosine. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's more convenient, perhaps, and you know, uh, to deliver the adenosine by uh, either peripheral vein or intracoronary, uh, but uh, we're not sure that uh, we get the same result, so we may be calling things differently. Tell us about your trial in this dose escalation. Okay, we try to evaluate what, to, to, to evaluate what could be the best dosage for uh, adenosine when uh, we administer the drug directly into the coronary because uh, uh, when we do intravenous administration, uh, we know we may have more side effects. We, it's um, uh, it's uh, more expensive, takes more time. So, uh, so far, few days, a uh, few studies have investigated what could be the right dosage is still unknown. In the beginning, we started with very small dosages years ago with 10, 20 micrograms. After that, we went up to 150, 120, but this, there is still confusion about that. Therefore, we decided to, uh, to perform a study in order to evaluate if there could be a dose-effect relationship between adenosine administration and FFR. As you know, FFR is uh, very important. Nowadays, it's strongly recommended in order to evaluate the hemodynamic impact of uh, intermediate stenosis. It's certainly gaining in, in popularity, as it should, because of the concern that uh, angiography is not so accurate as we once thought. Absolutely, I fully agree with that. Therefore, we, uh, evaluate, we evaluated in 46 patients with 50 intermediate stenosis the effect of escalating dose of uh, adenosine from uh, 60 micrograms up to 720 micrograms. What we found that uh, FFR, uh, there was an, a significant relationship with uh, the, the highest percentage of patients reaching a significant FFR less than 0 0.75 with 720 micrograms. Uh, we had only few side effects, especially in patients with right coronary artery. As we know, adenosine may induce bradycardia, even AV block. And uh, in these patients, we had uh, an AV block, but uh, in no case we needed to implant a pacemaker. So it's relatively safe, but what you found was a a dose-related response yeah. that uh, to, to get up to the uh, maximum uh, vasodilatation and the maximum flow. Given that, what do we do with this information? Do you find, is there an answer? Is there one dose that we should be using? Yeah, uh, I would recommend at least to go, nowadays it's recommended to, to, do, to give 150 micrograms. I would suggest to go up at least with 360 micrograms, what we did in our study. And in case of a borderline lesion, I would recommend to go up to borderline values. I would recommend to go up at least to 720 micrograms as we did in, uh, in our study. Of course, we need additional studies in order to further support this finding and to really evaluate with a larger number of patients what can really be the, the dosage to, to recommend. So the practical effect of this is going to take some lesions that we said were not significant and throw them over into the significant category. So what's your prediction? I mean, is this going to, is this 10% of intermediate lesions? Is it 50%? It was about 20% of our lesion became significant when we increased the okay. dosage of adenosine. So more adenosine means more stents. Yeah. But maybe appropriately. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is fascinating stuff, and I think we'll, we'll really look forward to uh, your paper, which uh, is, uh, explains this in more detail. Thanks for visiting with us. Thanks for joining us.